So you're just clipping everything that's sticking up? Pretty much. Which we're not going to be able to completely do. Because of where it sits. But the rest we'll do with the rest. Okay, now that we did that, see how much different that is? So now that's all, all this sticking up. Well, it's sticking up here too. It's a little chunk of bar. That's bar too? It's just something that's meandered down. But all of that extra height, is, is that excess then? Okay, I'll clean it up a little bit. So you can see the bar, you mean? Yep. Okay, so I just went under the bar and lifted it up. So that's where her bars have laid over on top of the sole. And normally they would just be sort of a line there mm -hmm. and not sole. Yep, you want them to be straight. Which we'll basically do with the knife, but... Get a little bit off. Nope, nope, nope. Nope. So normally you do that with a knife, but if they're sticking out that much, you could use the nippers? Yeah. There we go. Because it takes so much work with the knife. Yeah, I've had a hard time trying to <laughs> yep. do anything. Yep. So. Okay. You see how this comes around and comes back down? Mm -hmm. And you can see the difference in the material? Yeah where this one is still way over here. Mm -hmm. And here's like a little bit of a yuck underneath where it's pushed under. But... Okay, so there we're starting to get to an actual V, more like this, instead of coming up and over on top of the sole. Because that side you're on, it's way down. Yep. But you can see where it's been sitting on top of the sole and it's discolored it. This is just sole callus. You see how it laid all the way over? And yeah. It's starting to, the material is starting to change. And you can see this is like a, a line right there. Mm -hmm. That's the bar. Yep. The bar is, your pigmented is the dark bar. The white is your unpigmented bar. And it actually has a golden line, just like here. Yeah, you, there's a really clear line. Oh, Margo. You have a yucky there, don't you? She has a little bit of an abscess. See how it keeps going? That dark one that's going you're digging out? Uh-huh. What happens is, did you see where when I took the nippers and kind of went under and lifted it up? The dirt, pea, ma manure get under in between those two oh. and you can't get to them. So it just keeps shoving down in there, causing this. Easy, babe. So, you have to get to the bottom of it, or it'll just keep shoving in further. Oh, you don't want to just leave that then? Nope. Because what happens is, hey look, we're almost to the bottom of it. Um, it'll just keep pushing, 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 and it'll keep going further up into the foot. So you want to get all the pressure off of it, so that it doesn't go further in. And there it looks like up against the frog or? Yep. So, but this one didn't lay over as bad as the other side. 
Hi, babe. No. I'll give you a break. Give me a second. Okay. You're doing it two handed there. <laughs> so, all the pink up here is from bruising. Like around her toe, uh -huh. that line. That, yep. that looks, that would scare me to see it so pink there. What happens is that's your, that's your golden line right there. Mm -hmm. So that's the softest area. And since she's been walking on her toes to avoid pressure, it's caused a bruise. It takes time for it to bruise. It doesn't happen kind of overnight. All of this yuck will keep getting pushed up into the hoof. So that's why you're digging out that dirty bit? Yep. Which we're gonna do an air gap there anyway to allow for expansion. But And you're cutting that frog because it's sticking out. Yep, you don't want it taller than your sole or your wall. Because then it will cause pain. Which hers is tipped sideways because of the way she's been walking on it. So the callus is pushed over. Mm. And you cut that with a lot of confidence that it doesn't hurt to cut that frog. The, the soft part of the frog is probably this deep down. Oh, that's quite deep. So all of this is callus that forms over time. But your live frog is way down there. So... This right here is your central sulcus, which is technically when the frog has grown where it needs to be, which is down here. Um, your central sulcus would be about here, which is about where your bars end. Central sulcus is? This crack. Oh, okay. The natural crack in the hoof. Let me see that. So, and it goes halfway down the frog, a third of the way down the hoof, which is the same distance that your bars naturally go. So, did you get your book yet? I did. Nice. I just barely got it. Nice try. So you want your bars to ramp from here and slowly taper down to where they stop.
Reason being, when the hoof expands, this is kind of your doorstop. It'll expand to that point, and then it'll tell the foot, stop, you know, you've went too far. When these aren't trimmed, there's so much weight on the hoof, it has to go somewhere. So that doorstop just pushes up in. Easy, babe. If you don't get the ramp down from like the switchbacky part, mm -hmm. then down to halfway down the frog. Yeah. Then it pushes up inside because where your coffin bone sits, that's where it rotates. So your hoof kind of expands and contracts with every step. So if that bar is long, when that hoof expands, it's got to go somewhere. So if it's ramped, then your hoof can expand and it'll stop where it's supposed to. So otherwise it pushes it further and further in to the hoof. The bar into the hoof. Yes. Are you going back to eating again? Easy. You want to look at what I was looking at? Yeah. From the heel, we're making sure the heels are the same length. The frog's lower than both of them. I'm going to open up the frog right here on both sides. But this is still a little bit high. You can see it sticking up there. Mm hmm. So this one's longer. You're going to make that a little bit shorter. Yep, what I'm going to do is you open up the collateral groove, or the, yeah, the collateral groove, because otherwise everything just kind of gets built up in there, the muck and yuck, and, and this is the collateral groove in there. Yep, and this is your central focus. So you want this to be able to open and close and let the gunk slide out of it. Flow back and out. Mm -hmm. Instead of clogging up and not clearing the gap. So right there, can you see how there's still little white lines that go forward? Yeah, they're going like... Uh-huh. That's still little strings of bar. Oh. They're thin at that point, but they're still there. So you're going to cut them out there. Just lightly go across them to take them away. So you're going perpendicular to them. Yes. It's like cutting the root of a tree until those white lines go away. Because you're telling them you shouldn't be going that way. Yes, you want to stop, and that's the only way to get them to stop is to cut the cut the branch. Where this one? See how it just changed right here, and this is still hard. That's because she's still got a thin layer of bar that's sliding around here, which we're not going to get it all off today, but you'll notice in a few days she'll have a ridge right there again. And you want to just peel it until it looks like this. See how it got like kind of chalky? Yeah. Just by peeling it. So when I like scrape over it, I'll see that it's the same mm -hmm. material. Yep. But we don't want to go down too deep on her and make her sore. How would she be sore if you went too deep? It's Because uh, I would be afraid to go too deep on my own if not knowing yeah. as easily how deep is deep. It's deep. Um, oh, how can I explain it? You still have probably quarter, three-eighths of an inch from here, 
before you're going to hit the capsule. You don't want to go to where you're hitting pink. But what happens is when the bar's laid over on here, mm -hmm. the sole underneath of it can't grow. So when the sole can't grow, it ends up really thin, and that's what they talk about thin soles. It's because the bar's laying on top of it, and that sole cannot build callus, and it can't stretch out. So when you have the bar on there, and you start getting it thinner and thinner and thinner, it releases that sole a little bit to where it can push out. And grow it like it should. Yep, like grass underneath the board. The grass is still there, but it's weak, and it just wrinkles up. You make that board real thin, and that grass can start stretching and trying to get back up Sorry, the, the strength. Sorry, do you want to leave a tiny bit of bar to not get to that tender No, nope, you want the bar off of there so that Holy that God. sole can grow completely where it needs to be. Um, when the soles push down like that, it's inferior, and you can't build callus. Your callus is what makes your strength. It builds up that extra layer uh, so it doesn't get hit the rocks and abrasion on this ground. So, so when you take the bar off of the sole where it's supposed to be just sole, the sole is then not used to being out as much so it's going to go through a process of building a callus. Correct. You like you're getting this. <laughs> yeah, I want to be sure. <laughs> yes, it has to have time to build. So I don't want to take it down so low that she's sore because all there is is a thin layer of weak tubules underneath there because that bar's been on there so long. So give her a week and you can peel off a little bit and don't go any deeper than the dirt line. The area that's around the frog mm -hmm. where it's a little bit deeper than what I was doing. Watch. Yeah, let's see. Come here, babe. See how there's dirt here? Yeah. You don't want to go deeper than that. So you can peel all of this to that dirt line, but you don't want to go deeper than that dirt line. So and right now, all of this is, remember we were talking about the shape of the knife? Yeah. It's the same as here. So you don't want to go this way because then you're going to dig deep. But you want it to be at this angle all the way around. So once the sole can start growing again, this is going to bulge back up just like it was up here. Mm -hmm. You're going to have that bulge because the sole is going to start pushing it away. And so all you're going to do is peel off that bulge that's sticking up yeah. just to where you're even with the dirt line again. But when it bulges, it's sole bulging up because you took off the bar now. There's still a little thin layer of bar there. I don't want to go anymore because mm -hmm. it'll expose because you can see the, the dirt line and you, that's uh -huh. enough because the sole that is underneath this little bit of bar right here is weak it's going to make her really sore so i'm not saying that the bar is protecting it i'm saying that it can't grow until that bar is completely gone it'll start to push out now because mm -hmm. there's not as much weight on top of it and you gotta figure when she steps Remember we were talking about the, you know, the hoof expanding? Watch this groove. So when she steps, that hoof expands. Which is going to make this push out. Oh yeah, because then the middle Every, part goes down. Exactly. So it's going to start pushing this little bit of bar that's still here. It's going to start pushing it down every time that that foot, foot stretches. Because those sole tubules are coming straight this way. Those bar tubules are going that way. Mm -hmm. So since these are pushing down, it'll start pushing these out of the way. So, like I said, in about a week, take and do it again. You know, just skim that little bit off to the dirt line until you see where it looks flaky. That flaky is because the sole's tubules come straight down. So it's just, okay. 
See how this crumbles? Yeah. That's because that's sole. This is bar. Oh, it's really resisting. Huh. So that's that's all the difference is. But it makes that much of a difference. Like I said, the sole tubules come straight down. It'll break. Those bar tubules are laying sideways and they don't break. They're hard to rip, they're hard to tear because they're the same keratin as the outside wall, well, not keratin. the sole. She loves keratin. We learned a lot about keratin in the museum the other day. <laughs> <laughs> like fascinating. Oh look, we have another geek. <laughs> it's true. Um, so yeah, like I said, give it a week or so. And then bad. just yeah, lightly go over that <laughs> and take it back <laughs> to the dirt line. The sole tubules, when it builds callus, it'll mm. flake off like that little piece that I showed you. Yeah. That is how callus, callus becomes. You can chip it off like that. Where the bar, you actually have to peel it. That's yeah. So. I'll look anyway. at a diagram when we go. <laughs> this is pretty heavy stuff for stepping <laughs> That's a lot for you to learn. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to back up the toe. Just remember I was saying that the toe's stretched. Mm -hmm. It's long. Uh huh. You want to take that pressure off of it so it'll quit pulling forward. You can't have it back yet, babe. So when it comes down to, this will be completely flat all the way down instead of having that little pink right there at the oh, end. Yeah, it was starting to get wider. Uh huh. One time, babe. Are you itching my back for me? Thank you. No. 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 So when you want to remove any flare, remember she was walking on the side of her foot where it was yeah. pulling it out you want it to be level so you just want to go down and remove any bulging that's in the wall yeah I can see that there yep. because if it's bulged it's going to continue to pull and you want it smooth all the way around We still have to put in her air gap. Yes. Or one. So looking down here is a little bit tall. Which part is tall? Right here. Oh, I see that. So when you look down, you want it to be nice and smooth and even. Otherwise, this is going to bruise more. Yeah, and you can see it's pink there. Mm-hmm. So and then we're going to put in an air gap here and here so that the hoof can expand and contract and not just chip out right there. And then when you were doing the toe, like this is the golden line, right? Mm -hmm. So you didn't hit the golden line there? Nope. Sometimes you have to. Um, when the toe pulls forward, everything pulls forward. So your golden line and everything will pull forward. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to come all the way back into the golden line just to straighten up that line again. So if the toe is really long and you have to go into the golden line, you're not hurting them by going into the golden line. No, and all of this is oh. bruised oh, poor girl. from standing on her toe. That looks painful. Yeah, but all that's old. That's not figure. hurting her now? Nope. Yeah, she's not reacting. This bruise came from up inside, and it took time to get down. What is 
does it leave white marks? I'm cheating so that I have less use of my knife. So we're making a concavity there so that, that hoof can relax. Well, that's the air gap you're talking about. Yep. Oh. So when the hoof stretches and expands, this part moves and it stretches those tubules. And it doesn't have wall resisting that stretching. Correct. So, if you lower this down, this side I did more because of where she was stretched so bad, so it doesn't pull it out. Because if I left this long, it's gonna continue to open this up. And we don't want that to open. We want that to be able to connect because up here it's connected really good. It's when it gets down here that it's stretched. So if we move, take this pressure away, it'll quit pulling and opening that up. So this is your pigmented wall. That's your hardest um, material. The white right here is your unpigmented wall. This is your golden line. As time goes by, this white line will get smaller because the keratin on the outside gets harder from natural movement and wear. So this will start filling in with the harder keratin. Does that make sense? I'm trying to think about it all in my mind. <laughs> so the outside of your wall is the hardest. Yes because it gets so much exposure, it has yeah. to stay hard. This one doesn't get much exposure. It's the inner side of the wall. Well, when they're barefoot like this and the hoof can move properly, it makes it all stronger. So this stronger color, the dark color, yeah, will, will take be... over the light color. I have horses that don't have light color at all. The, whole, the hoof wall, is solid all the way through but it takes time and she is the light color because it's from lack of strength the tubules are hollow because they haven't filled they don't have the strength to them to fill them so as she moves and as her hooves grow stronger then those will fill in too. Instead of being a hollow straw, it'll be a solid straw, which will give them more strength. So. Right. But on the other ones, when we were talking about the arch and the hairline, yes, the arch that we put here will go away. As she walks and those slide down, Yeah. that arch will go away. That little air gap is just going to sort of naturally reach yep. out. But and it, so each time it does, you're going to want to go in and just put a light air gap in. When the hoof is healthy, it doesn't need to be any taller than a business card. As long as you slide a business card underneath between the heels and the side, there's enough room for that hoof to expand and contract. When it's flat across the ground, hmm. there's no room. So... But like I said, as that arch goes away, it's because that relaxes and we'll be flat across the ground again. That colt that I've been working on, yeah. his arches have gone away three times in two weeks. Hmm. Because his hoof is starting to expand. It's changing. And the two bills are sliding down. So it's all a process of the hoof being able to mechanically work correctly. Okay, sweetheart, we're going to have to turn.